Johnny D here and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the uh, Sparkle Orc A580 OC edition uh, from Intel. I recently picked this up uh, over the holidays and I was curious to see how it performs. This falls in under the sub 200 category, so the entry level. This is an area that NVIDIA and AMD kind of abandoned or forgot about. The only competition really down there is itself, Intel, and uh, some really old graphic cards from like 2019. So you can pick this up for $179. It's the Challenger Edition I've seen for $169, and I've seen it as low as $159 over Black Friday. Let's talk about the, uh, the card a little bit. So the fans in the card are a little different. They, they call it a torn cooling system. So it has some etching on the fans, which is supposed to pull in more air and uh, help uh, cool the system a lot better. It also comes with a thermal sink light or LED, if you will. So like the Sparkle Insignia lights up as the card gets hotter. So like at idle, it would be at white. Uh, in use would be at blue, uh, it'll go to yellow, and then finally red. So <clears throat> red's like 90 degrees Celsius, and white's like 40 degrees Celsius, and you got blue and yellow in between there. So uh, it, it's good to know. Talk about the, the, the card a little bit. So it has one HDMI 2.0 out, has three display ports out at 2.0 as well. It has 24 XE cores and it has 24 race tracing units. It has 8 gigabytes of GDR6. It has a 256-bit BIOS. The memory bandwidth comes in at 512 gigabytes and it runs on a PCI Express 4.0. It also has two 8-pin connectors for power. I think the total power draw out of the box is 160. I think you can bump it up to 200 if you want to overclock it. So with that said, let's talk about the test bench. Uh, this is one of my recent builds here that I made for my nephew. I figured why not? Uh, it's almost like the sparkle was made for this case. So uh, what we got here is we got an i5 12600KF. We got the AK400 digital cooling CPU. We have 32 gigabytes of RAM team group cl18 uh we got a 750 watt power supply we got a b760 motherboard and yeah i'll leave more details in the description below but uh, that's, that's it for now so one of the cool things about arc is uh they come with av1 encoders and uh they're really good for content creation on a budget so uh, we're going to put the gaming to the test, but we're also, I'm going to edit the video on this so I can give you some feedback on how good it is. Well, that said, uh, well, let's, uh, let's, let's test her out. Let's see what she can do. Okay, so first up, we have Halo Infinite. We're at 1080p high settings. And for some reason, I set the minimum and max FPS to 85 but as you can see, uh, as we go through the campaign, we're staying at exactly 85 FPS through the entire run. That's a great thing. You got no stutters. Uh, it makes for really smooth gameplay. Um, very nice showing. Whoa. Now, that was pretty intense. And we're just sticking around the 85 mark. I'm recording. We got two streams going. $157 graphics card. This is fantastic. I mean, I am really impressed. Next up, we have Fortnite. Here we are at low settings, 1080p. We're in the battle bus. See, as we drop in, we're averaging about 120 FPS on the drop in, which is a great thing. So if we're going to see some stutters, it's usually right here where we see it. So, so far, so good. And as you'll see, as we go through the gameplay, we're averaging about 145 to 170 FPS, depending on the area. So, which is a pretty good showing as well. Uh, so, uh, pleasantly surprised here. All right, next up, we got Forza Motorsports. 
on the new release from Forza. Uh, and as you can see, here we are at 1080p high settings, and if we're going around the track, we're averaging between 80 and 85 FPS, which is a really good showing. Um, again, I'm pleasantly surprised here as well. And as you can see, I did struggle uh, in this game. I did place 20 or so. Not a very good showing on me, but a very good showing on the card. Wow. Not very good. Next up, we got Forza Horizon 5. This is the in-game benchmark, and uh, as you'll see, uh, we get a nice, I think, uh, 105 average at the end here, so uh, another good showing. Uh, but this is one game where you could stretch this card to uh, 1440p. This is a very well-optimized game, so you could probably get away with 1440p, medium to high settings on this card if you wanted to. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, holding its own, and no complaints here. Next up, we got Cyberpunk, and uh, this is the in-game benchmark as well. Uh, we are at 1080p high settings again, uh, and as you can see, as we go through this run, we're going to end up with a average frame rate of 80 frames per second, which again, pretty good showing here, no complaints. Uh, so yeah, um, the card's doing well. So overall, a nice showing uh, for the RK 580 as far as gameplay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied, pretty impressed, um, considering how far ARK has come. So this, you know, seems to be a very val valid card uh, for gaming, especially 1080p gaming. I mean, I think you're looking at medium to high settings in most games. Um, but with that said, let, let's hop over to the editing. So here we are. We're in DaVinci Resolve here. I am going to go ahead and uh, reset my workspace here. There we go. So as you can see, we have multiple videos here. Overlays and overlays. So, you know, pretty good showing. Let's go back to the, to the beginning here. So, um, you know, scrubbing through the scrubbing through the timeline doesn't seem to be a problem. It goes pretty good. I mean, no issues. Very nice. No stutters. A lot of times you see the card can't keep up at a stutter. So uh, I'm doing pretty well here. Um, no issues. Playback is fine. Um, this up uh, over the holidays, as you can see. See how it forms. Uh, this falls in um, the, the sub category, so the entry level. So usually um, all my editing I do on this PC over here, and that has Arch A770 in it. Down there is itself. Uh, with a uh, i5 13500, 32 gigabytes of RAM, DDR5 platform. And it, and it suits me very well. And honestly, I can't tell the difference between the two just from this one video that I'm editing. Uh, so overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, so, you know, if you wanted to get into budget editing, this card obviously can do it. As you'll see with the finished product that I put out, we'll all be on this, this system. So I think with that said, uh, let's uh, wrap this video up and uh, talk about it. We kind of put the ARC A580 through its bases. I'll be honest, I'm surprised. It did perform really well for a budget card. Um, you're looking at medium to high settings at 1080p. So as far as that's concerned, good stuff. And if you wanted to get into budget editing, it's really good for editing, as you can see. But there are some drawbacks to this card. In the beginning of the video, you heard me say that ARC's competing with itself. So the ARC A580 currently is $179. And currently at the same price, the ARC A750 is at $179. So given the choice, what would you buy? Obviously, the A750. And the Predator model over the holiday went down to $169, coming in cheaper than the ARC. So like I said, Intel's competing with themselves there. 
and the only other card that I would consider in, in that price point is uh, the RX 6600. Uh, it's it's still a valid card, it's still a good card. It's going to be, you're going to get the same performance like A750, RX 6600. Like they trade blows, they go hand in hand. So they're about equal as far as gaming. But as far as editing is concerned, hands down, the R cards are going to do a better job. And the 6600 doesn't have the AV1 codex. But with that said, I mean, overall, you know, I got a lot of R cards here, but A580 performed well. I think it all comes down to price. I think if this card came in at $150, it would be a steal. It would be definite. But, you know, with ARC competing with itself, you know, the A750, the same price as the A580, of, of course you're going to go with the better card. Why wouldn't you? And even at $199, which you see the ARC A750 sometimes, I would just, you know, pony up the $20 and go the ARC A750. You'll, you'll have a better experience with that. But if this was in the $150 range, you'd have yourself a really good card here. So, you know, just keep in mind, there's no such thing as a bad graphics card. It's all about the price and price to performance. Like the 4060 Ti, nothing wrong with that card. It's a great card. It just costs too much. You can get better performance out of a cheaper card, and that's 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 where you, uh, you know you see all the negative reviews coming from. It has nothing to do with how the card performs. It's all about the price. So I think if Intel comes down on the price, you'll have yourself a very valid budget card. And with that said, if you like what I'm doing, hit that thumbs up. If you really like what I'm doing, why not subscribe so you get notified when I create cool content. And with that said, you all have a great day, and thanks for watching. Bye now. I think I rambled a little bit. Yeah, probably.